If you're interviewing for a PM role at a top tech company, you're most likely going to get questions like, what goals would you set for product X? In one of my most popular videos, I went through a framework teaching you how to tackle these type of questions, and lots of you asked for more examples. So today, I'm gonna to walk you through a couple more examples using Facebook products. Hey guys, I'm Diana, and I'm a senior product manager at a big tech company in Silicon Valley, California. And I teach you the best tips to get into product management and teach you how to succeed once you've made it. To share the framework again, we're gonna start off with number one. What is the product? Who are the users? And what is the value to each of the users in this ecosystem? Second, the North Star metric should represent the value to each of the users in the ecosystem. Number three, we're gonna break down the North Star metric into its components so you can think about the funnel or using growth levers. Number four, the last one, is to think about downstream metrics and counter metrics. How is this product affecting the rest of the larger product ecosystem? If you need a refresher on this framework, watch my product interview success metrics and goals video that I'll link above in the end card. All right, let's talk through the group's product. Let's start off with the first step, the product, users, and value. So what is Groups? Groups is a product that helps organizers create an online community for members who share similar interests. How does it work? An organizer would create a group on a specific topic. They might invite people they already know interested in the topic and decide to keep the group open where anyone can join or closed where people have to request to join the community. Then when members join, the organizers and the members can interact through posts, comments, events. For example, one of my favorite groups is the Women in Product group that was started by Facebook product managers, gathering women who are aspiring product managers and existing product managers to help each other because we all know we need more women as product managers. Still part of the first step, let's go into the ecosystem. We have on one side, we mentioned organizers. They derive value when people not only join their group, but they are interacting in the group through comments, posts. Now members who join the group derive value when they're interacting in the group with other members and connecting with them over posts, comments, reactions. And Facebook, although not a user, but a stakeholder, they fulfill their mission when they're able to connect members within the group, again, who share similar interests. And how that connection happens is through posts, comments, reactions, and maybe messaging that happens when members wanna connect one-on-one. -on -one. Now, step number two, ask yourself, what is a good North Star metric here? And in our framework, we say a great North Star metric is one that represents the intersection of value for all these users and stakeholders. So if I'm looking for a commonality or a common denominator or intersection between the three parties we just talked about, it has something to do with interactions via posts, comments, reactions. I don't wanna just count one of them because they're all important in their own way. So how do I come up with a metric that represents all the interactions happening in groups. My first instinct is maybe just count the number of interactions happening in the groups. How many comments are happening? How many posts are happening? But that's gonna end up being a pretty messy metric. So instead, something simpler to count, number of people meaningfully interacting in a group per month. And when I say meaningfully interacting, I mean posting, commenting, because those are the most valuable. Why? Because these actions create more activity on the platform. Whereas you can imagine with reactions and likes, they're more so FYI. So if someone sees it, they might not necessarily interact more. And this North Star metric we chose also represents that people are connecting, which again is Facebook's mission now. The third step, 
let's break down this North Star to come up with some other health metrics that contribute to this top line, but that we also want to monitor to make sure it's a healthy ecosystem. Here, my tip is think about funnels and growth levers. If you think about a healthy groups ecosystem, one of the first things is having enough supply or number of active groups available for people to join. And further breaking that down, I want enough organizers in the ecosystem to be creating these groups. I want to see the number of groups that are created, but also the number of groups that are actually activated. On top of this, I might want to further segment the types of groups that exist on the platform. This is not part of my main dashboard, but I might want to analyze that to make sure I have a healthy diversity of groups that represents people's interests. So that's the group side of the equation. Now let's talk about the members side of the equation. So again, in a healthy ecosystem, having supply is important, but also having members who want to be part of groups or searching for groups is equally as important. So one metric I'll want is the number of active members on the group's platform. And if I'm thinking about the funnel, I might think how many members are even going into the groups tab to either search for groups or check on their existing groups. Then I might be asking how many group members are spending more than 30 seconds when they click into the groups tab. And then further down the funnel, how many of these people are actually interacting through posts, comments, reactions, likes, any type of interaction that's happening beyond just passively scrolling because people in groups don't just get value from reading content, but they get value from interacting with the people that share similar interests like themselves or when they share their own content. Another healthy balance I'll want to measure is the number of join requests, because I mentioned earlier, for some groups that are closed, you'll have to request to join and how many number of approvals Obviously, it'd be a bad experience if a ton of people are requesting to join a group, but they're not getting their requests to be approved, so they can't actually participate in the group. So that covers the other health metrics. Now let's go into the fourth step, which is talking about what downstream impact this product can have on the rest of the product ecosystem, in this case, the Facebook product ecosystem. So I'd imagine if people are really enjoying groups, that might lead to a decrease in the time spent on say newsfeed or other products and especially a product like newsfeed which is facebook's main surface for you to stay updated on your friends and families and the main surface where facebook monetizes through ads that might not be great for the newsfeed team who will lose some share in time spent and potential ads revenue and to round it off let's think about counter metrics counter metrics helps us assess that there are not negative externalities happening in the ecosystem. For example, with the groups product, some counter metrics could be the number of groups reported. Another metric could be the number of members blocked. If we see a high percentage of number of groups that are created, we also see a high percentage of number of groups that are reported. That's not going to be great because it's telling you a lot of the quality of your groups have some integrity issues. Have you learned something new so far? If so, let us know by liking the video. And next week, we're going to have a new video teaching you how to ace the product manager interview. So make sure you don't miss that by subscribing to the channel now.